So this is our 5-9 homework on the first half. So this was 6 through 16 all. And we didn't really talk about anything with the square root with a variable underneath, but hopefully this made sense that if it was the square root of m squared, it'd just be m. So um, take a minute to look at that. If you're struggling with anything, please let me know. And I will start our next set of notes. And again, we'll probably alter the homework slightly because of, um, just because we had skipped over some of those. So I might kind of give you guys a few more. So we're gonna solve by square roots here. Um, so I'm gonna leave off on notes. I'm just gonna keep them um, on this page, but hopefully you have the note packet to print. If not, you can follow along with us this way. Um, so solving by square roots. This is something you guys did in algebra again, um, but something you haven't seen for a while. You might actually saw it a little bit in geometry now that I think about it. You wanna isolate what's being squared. So what I mean by that, whoops, squared, is there's two different things being squared here. Here there's an x squared being squared, so that's what we'd isolate it. But this, the x plus five is being squared. So we wanna isolate whatever's being squared, regardless of if it's a set of parentheses or um, just a single x. So one or the other, these are kind of the two types. So we're gonna isolate that. Um, once we do that, so actually let me go through with this. Zero and 16 is 16. So we isolate what's being squared. Now we're gonna take the square root of each side. Now, one of the things we have to remember when we're solving, we're taking the square root. When I take the square root of 16, there's actually two answers, both a positive and a negative four. So remember positive and negative. Also remember if there needs to be an imaginary solution. That happens when we take the square root of a negative. So the plus or minus comes from the fact that four times four is 16, but also a negative four times a negative four is also positive 16. So both answers have to be included here. Now, so here in this problem, we go to solve it. Um, this is isolated, so I'm gonna take the square root of each side. Now, I take the square root of 36. So again, I'm gonna do a positive and negative square root of 36, which is actually gonna be six, but it's also gonna be a negative six. So I'm actually gonna set up two equations. So the reason for that is because there's more going on here than what was going on over there. So we may need to solve for x again still. If you need to simplify the radical, please do. We don't want decimals. Well, and I didn't have to, I mean, I figured out this as an answer, but not to solve each of these. So X ends up being one, but it also ends up being a negative 11. So you could try both of those answers back in this original problem and it would work. Because one plus five is six squared is 36. Negative 11 plus five is a negative six squared would also be 36. So we need both answers. So we're gonna do just a few more examples with these. And like I said, I'm probably gonna um, alter our homework just slightly to get you a little bit more practice, um, but nothing too crazy. So I might add just a few questions down here. So we'll go through these. Um, we wanna isolate what's being squared. So the x squared is being squared here. I'm gonna isolate that. So I get x squared equals 64. I take the square root of both sides. So I get plus or minus eight. Square root of 64 is eight. I need to include both the positive and the negative version. Let's actually go down. Well, yeah, that's fine. We can go down to this one. It's another one where it's just an x squared, so I'm gonna isolate that. So move the 12 over. It's 
divide by 3. So I get x squared equals negative 1. Now when I go to take the square root of negative 1, hopefully you remember that that's where that i comes in. The square root of negative 1 is actually i. But since I took the square root, I need both a positive and a negative i, which is kind of weird. It seems like there can't be a negative i, but there can be. So that's an okay solution, positive and negative i. All right, so going over here, we're going to isolate this this time. That's what's being squared. So I'm going to move the 3 over. This is 25. Now I take the square root of each side, plus or minus 5. So this is where I'm going to set up two equations. We didn't have to do that over here because it was just a single x alone already. So x ends up being 9 and also a negative 1. So we get those two answers, which is perfectly fine. We're used to getting two answers for quadratics. Here we're going to divide by a negative 4. x squared equals is a negative 9. I go to take the square root of each side. Square root of negative 9. Now square root of negative 9, if you put that in your calculator, it'll give you an imaginary number. But really remember, we think of it this as the square root of 9 times the square root of negative 1. So it's going to be plus or minus 3, but then also an i we include because of um, that negative 1 there. This one we want to isolate what's being squared. That's negative 6. I'm going to take the square root. Oops, I guess I don't need the parentheses anymore. x minus 5 equals plus or minus the square root of negative 6. So again, um, negative number, I'm going to pull that i out. Leave this 6 on the inside. Now, square root of 6 can't be simplified. It's 2 and 3. It's not a perfect square, so it's just going to stay this way. But I still need to get this 5 away. So we're going to write it this way, which looks a little strange. So um, kind of take a minute to kind of see what I did there. I just moved this five over and I'm just going to leave that. I can't combine all that together. So I'm just going to kind of leave it looking kind of look a little strange there. And then here, this is already isolated. So I'm ready to take the square root of each side. So plus or minus the square root of 50. Now square root of 50 is not a perfect square, but I can break this up. 25 times two. Square root of 25 is 5. So it's going to be plus or minus 5 square roots of 2. And then I just need to move this 10 over. So 25 and 2 became 5 and 2. So 